Hey guys, Ross from Natural Aesthetics. I've very kindly been sent in a chart from one of my viewers. It shows the BMI for all different winners of the Mr. America contest from 1939 to 1981. Of course, BMI is body weight divided by height squared, and it's commonly used by the NHS or health organisations to determine whether you're overweight or underweight. But it doesn't take into account muscle mass, it's just body weight. Nevertheless, if your BMI is over 40, whether that be fat or muscle mass, there's still a lot of weight to be carrying around, so there may be health implications from looking at the BMI alone. So some of these guys you know, are quite well known on this list. John Grimmick, um, got Bill Pearl, <coughs> Steve Reeves, you know, famous guys from the, the sort of a pre-golden era of bodybuilding. And if we look at the first guy, Burt Goodridge, I'll show you the pictures of some of these guys in a bit. His BMI was 26, sorry, 27.64 compared to uh, Tim Belknap, 38.70 in 1981. Um, that's a big difference. Um, even if we look at Dave Johns, 31.35 the year prior to that, it's still a big jump. And, you know, you have to remember as well that the body fat of these guys here in the 40s and 50s are going to be much higher than the guys in the 70s and 80s. So it's an indication that these guys have a lot more muscle mass you know, if their BMIs are higher with lower body fat percentages, they're carrying a hell of a lot more muscle. So it's just an interesting comparison there. If we go to the next chart, which is courtesy of a website called Pure Natural Bodybuilding, we can see the average BMI um, pre-1995 to post-1995. So kind of when um, HGH and insulin, human growth hormone and insulin was introduced, there was a massive increase in the athlete's BMI in IFBB bodybuilders. So the average competitor goes from kind of 30, 31, 32, and then suddenly after 1995, shoots all the way up above 34 and you know heads towards 38. That's the average competitor. So I've compiled a, um, a chart of my own, and this is the uh, BMI of random pro IFBB bodybuilders during Mr. Olympia contests from 1950 to 2007. So it's just, you know, some of the uh, years have multiple competitors listed, some don't. But one thing's for sure, the trend goes up massively. Between 2000 and 2010, there are guys that are showing BMIs of, of over 40. Um, so that's pretty insane. So let's look at some of these athletes. Uh, we'll start from one of the, one of the um, earliest guys. So this is Burke Goodridge, Clarence Ross. Um, this was probably a decade later, Jack DeLinger. So starting to become more muscular, um, but certainly attainable as a natural, given a decade or more of hard work. The next one on the list, Harry Johnson, 27, um, Bob Gadger, 1966, very nice physique. And then boom, we've got uh, the uh, 1981 winner. Insane muscularity. You know, his BMI is way up there. Obviously quite a short guy. Um, his BMI was 38. So carrying a lot more muscle. Um, and you can see his body fat's also a lot lower. Insane uh, neck on this guy. I don't think I've ever seen a neck and, and traps as thick as this. Go forward um, six, seven, eight years. Lee Haney. Much more aesthetic physique. Carrying a hell of a lot of muscle mass. And then another ten years from there, Ronnie Coleman. BMI consistently over 40. Here he is battling NASA. So the physiques have changed so much, it's, it's just unbelievable. And then Jay Cutler in 2005. Um, you know, big, big guys, both with BMIs over 40. Another three years onwards, I guess. We've got uh, Marcus Rule and, and Batista, both mass monsters. Again, BMIs of, of over 40. And then we've got the modern day mass monster Rolly Winkler showing that next level development, insane development of his shoulders and arms. So much more muscle mass compared to these guys here. It's just crazy. That transformation is just insane. So I just thought I'd compile some of this data. I do find it quite interesting. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more. Stay strong.